Hello everyone and welcome back to Creation Myths. I have a really fun one today because it finally happened. Dr. Nathaniel Jensen of AIG finally released a video in response to the critics of his latest book, Traced, and we are going to talk about it. If you don't already know the background on Dr. Nathaniel Jensen, he is a Harvard graduate, so this is Harvard PhD. Dr. Nathaniel Jensen, his specialty is cell and developmental biology, and as of this recording in February of 2023, he is employed as a scientist at Answers in Genesis. He has written two major books in creation science. There was 2017's, I think, Replacing Darwin, and in 2022, in March of 2022, he released Traced, which purports to use Y-chromosome DNA sequences in human populations to trace the history of humanity and show how it is compatible with his young Earth view. Or I should say, the young Earth view of Answers in Genesis. I've covered Dr. Jensen a lot over the years. He is a reliable source of incorrect claims and really terrible science, so he always gives me plenty to talk about. I even got a chance to talk to him directly last year in June of 2022 on the Apologetics Live show, uh, which I'll link down below to that conversation if you want to watch it, and we spent about an hour talking about his book Traced and some of the related issues. I also published a video review of Traced and many other people, some evolutionists and some other young earth creationists, have published reviews of Traced. All of these reviews have been critical to some degree. There has not been a single glowing review of Traced uh, from, like, a scientist. Uh, and that holds true even for the young earth creationists who have reviewed Traced. Now, Jensen, for a long time, basically since the book came out, has been doing a video series on AIG's YouTube channel, and he's been saying in these videos that he's eventually going to release a video responding to critics. And in February of 2023, he finally did just that. He released the video in which he says, I am addressing what the critics are saying. This video, as you can see, is 36 minutes long, but only about four of those minutes are actually relevant. The rest is a review of stuff Jensen's talked about before that's immaterial to the stated topic of responding to critics. So I'm going to play that entire section, uncut and unedited. Don't worry, again, it's just a few minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. If you don't believe what I'm about to say, you can look it up yourself. Daniel Cardinal, Herman Mays, and Joel Duff are the main professionals, scientific professionals, who've responded. And we're going to get into some of the details of what they've done here in a moment. Well, I'm going to focus here on Daniel Cardinal. He's a virologist at Rutgers. Herman May is an, is an evolutionary biologist at Marshall. If you've been following my work, you know I did a debate with him on my book, Replacing Darwin, several years ago. Joel Duff is a professing Christian and a professor of biologist at Akron in Ohio. I want to focus on what Cardinal says because his critique has some of the most points, most detail covers a lot of the ground that the other guys do. So his critique is a, is a, is a great one stop for understanding how the mainstream community has responded to this work. And I want to focus on one point that Cardinal made several times. So you can see here, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm giving you a screenshot from his video, YouTube video book review traced by me, of course, and that there's, there's Daniel himself presenting this, you'll notice up here the big problem. So that's his own words. He's saying, here's the big problem with my work. And I'll show you, he repeats this same point under other subheadings. He's got about six. I'm banging my microphone again because I'm excited. He says, the big problem, my simple error, is conflating genealogy with phylogeny. If you don't know if those terms are foreign to you, he's essentially saying, I've taken the father-son mutation rate, genealogy, and extrapolated it into the past, assuming it's been constant. That's the phylogeny part. And he cites a textbook. Now you might say, whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't you already address that point? Well, yes. Yes, I did three years ago. And number one, he doesn't seem to be aware this even exists. Number two... And here's the bigger point. This is the bombshell. What is his justification? 
That's a textbook reference. He's saying it's wrong. What I'm doing is wrong because it disagrees with the textbook. Apparently, evolutionists have a holy book that you can't question. Apparently, mainstream science has sacred ideas, perhaps not engraved in stone, but in ink on paper, that define the rightness or wrongness of a scientific idea. You would think the textbook itself, if it was scientific, would be open to testing, falsifiability, and everything else that defines science. But not according to Dr. Dan, which again, he, these are the leading people responding to what I'm saying, and the big problem, his words, <laughs> is that I'm conflating genealogy and phylogeny, and the textbook says otherwise. Amazing. Evolutionists, by their own behavior, have a religion, and you can't question that religion. You can't do science in disagreement with that religion. And just to show you, he's, he's camping out on this point, point number four of his critique, overlaying phylogeny and pedigree. Same thing again. Pedigree is the father-son, same I extrapolate in times past. <laughs> he says, you can't do that. It's just astonishing, mind-boggling. You can't apparently question the textbook or do experiments to evaluate experimentally what the textbook says. So let me ask you a question, you the viewer. Which of the two camps, young earth creationists or evolutionists, are the ones who refuse to take data and weigh it against opposing scientific data and thereafter reach the conclusions? Okay, so let's briefly break this down. And don't worry, this has to be brief because he barely says anything of substance. The first thing I want to address is a quick pot shot where he says, I don't seem to be aware that his work even exists. Here's that moment again. Didn't you already address that point? Why, well, yes. Yes, I did three years ago. And number one, he doesn't seem to be aware this even exists. I believe this notion comes from the Apologetics Live show where we spoke. Here's the clip that I think is relevant. Oh, is this so, using the branching, the number of branches and correlating population? Yeah, that's not how phylogenetic... I'm sorry. I, had a, I have to say that's not... You can't derive population yes. size from phylogeny like that. Thank you. You put this in your video. I encourage everyone to watch your video because it is a, one of the greatest gifts to creation science. What happens here is Jensen brings up a paper. He shows me the title and says, do you recognize this? And I said, yeah, I've read all your work. I know, I know your arguments. He then asked me to describe the paper, and I said, well, why don't you tell me which one it is? I didn't recognize the title, but as soon as he started describing the paper, I described the argument that he made in that paper, the approach he used to make his case in that paper. And he agreed, as you just saw, with my characterization. But he now says, I'm not aware that that work exists. I'm not going to say Dr. Jensen is a dishonest hack who would rather smear his opponents then engage with their arguments. I'm not going to say that. Maybe he just has a terrible memory. Maybe he's completely forgotten about the only time he's ever talked face-to-face -face on video with a critic of Traced. Who's to say? Next, I want to briefly review the critiques of Traced that Dr. Jensen is failing to address in this supposed response. The first and most striking of these is the actual evidence that substitution rates are in fact slower than mutation rates. This has been directly documented in a number of studies over the years, including but not limited to this paper from 1998 and this one from 2005, also from 2005, 2009, and again from 2009, 2014, one of my favorites, 2015, and 2016 just completely blows off all of this. Zero engagement, except to say in Traced uh, that two of these that I just mentioned, uh, the data are low quality without making a specific technical critique of the methods in those papers. He doesn't give a reason why the data are invalid. He just says that the sequence data they use has lower coverage than he would like, and therefore those sequences are unreliable. He doesn't give a reason beyond the lower coverage. He doesn't give a technical explanation. He just says, uh, lower coverage, they're no good. Lower coverage, you should look into it, certainly. I agree, higher coverage is always better, but that's not on its own justification for ignoring data. 
But that's only one of many critiques I and others have leveled at his work, and Jensen fails to even try to engage with. He ignores the fact that Neanderthal genome sequences, which are post-flood descendants of Noah in his model, completely invalidate his time to most recent common ancestor calculations. I've discussed this in depth, as has Dr. Joel Duff in his commentary on Traced. Jensen ignores that multiple authors have said that the way he uses their data, because he doesn't collect any of his own, is invalid. David Neff pointed this out regarding Dr. Jensen's misuse of a 2015 paper, as did Dr. Herman Mays regarding the specific data in Traced. And while we're at it, he's never addressed that he's using improper techniques to derive mutation rates from studies that aren't appropriate to do so. In one case, highlighted by Dr. Mays, by using a study with sequencing error rates in excess of the number of documented mutations, calling the entire exercise into question. Dr. Jensen claims that nobody has made and tested predictions based on his model. I've directly tested mutation rate predictions using Canary Island populations with known divergence times and found his predicted number to be off by a factor of 5 to 60. And guess what? I told him about this face-to-face -face when we spoke in June of 2022. There's no attempt to reconcile the Stone Age haplotype R1b specimen from northern Italy with his model. He says R1b would have entered Italy recently, in the 1400s, so even using his own chronology for the Stone Age, which would have been close to immediately after the Flood, this specimen violates his timeline by several thousand years. Zero mentions. He assumes the ancestor of two groups lived exactly between their current locations, an assumption that Dr. Rob Carter, a young Earth creationist working for Creation Ministries International, took issue with in April of 2022, shortly after the publication of Traced. This is all stuff I've brought up, in many cases directly to Jensen in that conversation from 2022. It does make one wonder if he's even familiar with the work he claims to be responding to, has he even watched the critical videos or read the critical reviews? I'm not saying he hasn't, but Dr. Jensen's seeming lack of familiarity with these critiques and reluctance to engage with these arguments on their merits does make you wonder. There's one last bit to cover here, and I don't know if it's worse than just ignoring all the stuff I just went through while claiming to be addressing the critics, but it's definitely funnier. Here's the moment from the clip I showed you at the beginning that I want to highlight. Number two, and here's the bigger point, this is the bombshell. What is his justification? That's a textbook reference. He's saying it's wrong. What I'm doing is wrong because it disagrees with the textbook. So here's the thing with that moment. I'm not getting the argument I'm making from that textbook. I've put together the argument, the critique, based on a body of evidence, some of which I've referenced in this video. I cited the textbook because I was providing the reference for the figure on that slide. Again, I'm not cribbing the argument from the textbook. I'm referencing the figure I used to illustrate the difference between genealogy and phylogeny, because I think that figure does a good job illustrating the relationship between the two concepts, how they're similar, and also the stark differences. In fact, I have that book right here. This is the book I was referencing, and here's the specific figure. There it is, right there. There's the figure. Jensen is saying, I got the whole argument from the textbook, and further, that that's the only basis for making that argument, that it's from a source I consider authoritative. Again, we see zero attempt here to actually engage with the argument on its merits. None. So I want to bring you all back to something Dr. Jensen says at the very end of the clip I showed you at the beginning, and play about the next minute. So let me ask you a question, you the viewer. Which of the two camps, young earth creationists or evolutionists, are the ones who refuse to take data and weigh it against opposing scientific data and thereafter reach the conclusions? Which of these two camps is the one that claims to be doing science but starts with a conclusion and refuses, it, refuses to change it regardless of the evidence developed in the course of the investigation? Which of these two views, creation science or evolution, are assaulting the entire mode of scientific thought and the guiding principle of science that traditional beliefs are open to skeptical inquiry? Which of these two views rests on authority, 
perhaps not of the Bible, but of a textbook and its most literal interpreters of the textbook. The questions he asks there were these. Which of the two camps, young earth creationists or evolutionists, are the ones who refuse to take data and weigh it against opposing scientific data and thereafter reach the conclusions? Which of these two camps is the one that claims to be doing science, but starts with a conclusion and refuses to change it regardless of the evidence developed in the course of the investigation? Which of these two views rests on authority? To answer these questions, I'm going to ask viewers to consider the data, the arguments, and the critiques Dr. Jeanson apparently isn't going to address, and compare that on one side to AIG's statement of faith, which all employees must agree to, on the other. That statement of faith contains the following. The account of origins presented in Genesis 1-11 to is a simple but factual presentation of actual events and therefore provides a reliable framework for, the scientific, for scientific research into the question of the origin and history of life, mankind, the earth, and the universe. The various original life forms, kinds, including mankind, were made by direct, supernatural, creative acts of God. The Great Flood of Genesis was an actual historic event, worldwide in its extent and catastrophic in its effects. At one stage during the flood, the waters covered the entire surface of the whole globe with no land surface being exposed anywhere. Scripture teaches a recent origin of man and the whole creation, with history spanning approximately 4,000 years from creation to Christ. The view, commonly used to evade the implications or the authority of biblical teaching, namely that knowledge and or truth may be divided into secular and religious, is unbiblical and therefore should be rejected. No apparent, perceived, or claimed evidence in any field of study, including science, history, and chronology, can be valid if it contradicts the clear teachings of Scripture obtained by historical grammatical interpretation. Dr. Jeanson, the answer to the question of who's doing science here and who isn't, of who's open to changing their mind and who isn't, of who's allowed to question authority and who isn't, seems pretty clear to me. So that's it for Jeanson's so-called response to the critics. He says that this is the last video in this multi-part series on Traced, so uh, while I would certainly like to see an actual effort to address the critiques I and others have made, I don't expect that to happen. There's one final thing I'll point out here. Last year, I released a video called Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson Thinks You're Stupid. In this video, I somewhat jokingly pointed out that he uses what he must certainly know are terribly weak and disingenuous arguments, and yet he apparently expects his audience to take them seriously. This response to critics, such as it is, seems to basically confirm the thesis that nobody has less respect for their audience than Dr. Nathaniel Jensen. If anyone watching his video took just a few minutes to watch mine, they'd see he's misrepresenting my argument and avoiding the substance of basically all the critiques leveled against him, including those from Young Earth sources. He makes a hilariously off-base and transparently bad faith attack while ignoring the actual critiques. He does his audience a disservice, assuming they won't check his work in even the most cursory way. And maybe he's right. Maybe the AIG audience will unquestionably swallow what ever Jensen says. It's worked so far, hasn't it? This has been my response to Dr. Nathaniel Jensen's attempt to respond to the critics of Traced. Mostly me. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video even if you absolutely hated it. Show all of your young earth friends just how dishonest and ignorant I am. Thank you for watching, and don't get fooled.